My speech today is very factual, reflecting on some of the real life issues we face as women. I wish there was more women in this hall because most of the things that I'm going to talk about today have a lot to do with women, even though I'm talking to men as well. But I want you to imagine this. Just picture this in your mind. I mean, a wake up before the first ray of sunrise. She prepares the meal with the aroma consuming the air, traveling across doors from house to house until it fades away. She then moves back and forth cleaning and dusting for the start of a new day. For many, she stays back and continues a routine that turns to years and eventually decades. Amina teaches her little girls the social norm of housekeeping as an only pathway. To be educated as a woman is a luxury. To be married and remain confined within the spare is standard, customary to a variety of traditions, especially in the North. All of this is okay. All of this was okay. But as the world is changing, this normalcy is slowly becoming unfashionable, disrupted with the gradual evolution of time. There has been a massive shift lately, breaking the norms and criteria. Women are now taking their skills outside their homes and are using their entrepreneurial and pioneering skills to take dominant and considerable strides in the business space. The latest report by PricewaterhouseCoopers has shown that women in Nigeria accounted for 41% ownership of micro-businesses. But this represents only 23 million business women in Nigeria, out of 250 million people. A woman is like the sun. Her light is limitless. She can rise and be a pillar a support system in every household, or she can be a maid and a baby manufacturer, or trained with life skills other than housekeeping. To break gender gap might perhaps seem like a daunting task, but it can be a seamless end of war if and only if men accept and support this protocol. Every woman should be an asset and not a liability. To receive basic education is a prerequisite to life. The Western world has defeated us already. Since they own science, they own philosophy, and they own technology. Therefore, it has become unavoidable that we tap into the system of intellectual trainings over time. It is indeed a victory for every father to marry off his daughter. Yes, it is. But what becomes of her when her husband becomes tired of her? Or he becomes deceived? 
Then comes the liability of self-care and childcare, sitting heavily upon her shoulders singularly, with no skills or experience in wheeling a sustainable life. Very quickly, this impacts directly upon our children. Without a national security, a, a national social security system in Nigeria to cater to the unemployed, to disabled people, to underage, to the old, she is left with no options. She has to marry them off, the little girl or she sends them off to become professional petty traders. The boys on the contrary become imaginary. While the system may seem as an innocent gesture dating back to many centuries, and imaginary are exposed to violence on the street. And this type of psychological violence causes their brain to release a stress hormone called cortisol, leading to something called toxic stress. Furthermore, this repeated pattern of stress causes them to lose their humanity gradually, slowly, over time. It becomes easy to, for them to become targets for them to easily be recruited as child soldiers and optimally street assassins. This is a better reflection of how a failed family unit is a catalyst to the insecurities we face today. We must understand that marriage institution is not a getaway from poverty. There are many contradictory dimensions to this setting. The world is progressing to accommodate for some of these deficiencies. In more developed countries where there is a system of social welfare, there is a life security for its citizens. For us here in Nigeria, where there is no system, it is a different ballgame. We have to take the bull by its horn. We have to navigate through the waters by ourselves. And this is the reason why we have an initiative called the Arewa Entrepreneurship Initiative. A partnership of like minds designed to complement government efforts and actualize some of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Although through awareness and enlightenment, we have come to accept that children must go through a system of learning through formal education, nowadays, especially the girl child. But in these current times, skills acquisition that will propel business and divorce is slowly beginning to stand abreast of schooling. So you can bag all the degrees you want in the world but if you lack the life skills and social emotional capabilities, you may struggle in real life. I am a woman. I work with women. I have women in my family. Therefore, I am in a place to tell you, fathers, Husbands, uncles, sons, brothers, you have a significant role to play in this arena. We need you to support us, to believe in us. It is tough being a woman in its own self, very tough. There are some tight bottlenecks existing in our society. Cultural norms embedded in our legal, economic, political, and social systems. They place barriers 
for us as women. The Nigerian system is extremely patriarchal. Strangely, the few women that are able to break barriers quickly become territorial, raising other forms of road roadblocks because of a fear of empowering the next girl. With an intent of not breeding a competition, unfortunately, this myopic mindset adds to our existing problems. Moving forward, I would like to remind you that gender equality is a human right. The UN SDG Goal 5 is aimed at empowering women and girls, thereby bridging this gap in all categories of life and leaving no one behind. A gender gap is a relative disparity between people of different genders. It is one of the most spoken about concepts of our time. But it is not enough to talk about. We must believe it. We must work towards it. Sokoto State is our city. It's your city. There is no other city for you. There is no way to run. You have to make it work. Women are not only less likely than men to start a business. But if they do, their business tends to be smaller, with fewer staffing and less growth expectations. Furthermore, women generate relatively smaller revenues than men and earn less income from business activities. It is well established Islamically men continue to lead women everywhere as long as we're Muslims. <laughs> Therefore, we're not trying to disempower you. No, we're not. But a gender balance in wealth creation will not only serve as a spare in the event of life misfortunes, it will also propel economic growth through industrialization. So when you talk about cities like Kano, like Lagos, and they talk about how they are you know, the center of uh, uh, trade and things like that, Sokoto can actually stand on the same platform as cities like that or even exceed them. Women's economic participation has shown to have a multiplier effect. The economic empowerment of one woman ripples meaningfully to her children and family, even to entire communities and nations. Entrepreneurs thus provide an important means for women to empower themselves and define their own economic participation when other employment opportunities may not be available. For example, in the southern part of Nigeria, you will see that everyone is trying to sell something so they can send their children to school. You would see them. Plumbers, welders, they're selling corn, they're in all forms of petty trade. They work menial jobs to make ends meet. So basically what they do is they turn every weakness to strength and every threat to an opportunity. This is something we call the SWOT analysis. When you become an entrepreneur, you would become very conscious with that. Children learn this from home when they see their mothers do it. Why? Because they spend more time with their mothers than their fathers. In a place like Lagos, hey, in a place like London, in a place like New York, creating wealth is not an option. It is a way of life.
you have to do it. Nobody, you can't go to anyone's house and knock on their door for a plate of meal. They will turn you away. Gender parity issues, yes, is a collaboration of institutional players, but the bulk of the work rests upon women and men already in power. We need them to open the gateway for the wheels to set in motion a pathway that will lead to a generation of a just and equitable people. I say this, and I say it again, because I have seen a lot of evil people mentor young men in Abuja, and I have seen how they have transformed them to, to tau, from touts to multi-millionaires. I read an article on Obi Kubana some time ago, and I read how he empowered a lot of young people. And I wish that what I'm saying could get to the ears of influential people because sometimes you need that mentoring. So if we look at gender gap in entrepreneurship, we can implore that fundamentally this gender imbalance reflects an inaccess to capital when I say capital, I mean human, financial, and social capital. They are all interlinked, and they are crucial in starting and sustaining an entrepreneurial venture. Human capital refers to the skills, business knowledge, and experience an entrepreneur needs to draw on. Financial capital refers to the necessary monetary resources, and social capital refers to access to networks, that provide information and resources as well as access to formal and informal mentor relationships. These three forms of capital, like I mentioned earlier, are interlinked. And women, in general, are less likely than men to have access to them all. As a result, women are are less able to fully take advantage of the opportunities that are available to them. The good news is that one of AIE's objectives is to empower women with access to these three forms of capital. We understand that starting a business can be difficult, isolating, and stressful, especially for women who are balancing their ventures with family obligations. At times in in impoverished conditions. But I'll give you a quick, quick synopsis of some of the programs we have in place for women. One, we will equip women and girls with the right leadership skills they need to become successful entrepreneurs through the AEI Lead Mentorship Program, where we will look closely at entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial leadership traits, choices, Courage, attitude, commitment, relationships, character, forgiveness, self worth, initiative, priority, self discipline, resilience, and influence. Secondly, we are going to take them through a bundle called Strategic Business Leader, a practical approach to the management of a small business, marketing, bookkeeping sources of finance, customer relationships, product life cycle. And lastly, because we understand networks provide valuable support that helps start and sustain a business, we have designed a close group methodology called Women's Worth, whereby female entrepreneurs are grouped, trained, and are there as a support system for each other while learning of the book survival techniques for SMEs. Before I leave this podium today, I would like to tell women, a few women we have from behind, yeah? And I want you to tell this to your friends, tell it to your mothers, 
to your sisters, yeah? Some harsh realities from my experience. 